Welcome ladies and gentlemen, this is Zero from TechDragon.info and today I bring you something slightly different. We're currently looking at the SU-100 and if we take a look at the tech tree, the Russian one, we see that the SU-100 splits up into the SU-100M1 and the SU-152. Now, a lot of people are going to be wondering which tank do I want to go for? Do you I want the SU-152 or the SU-100M? And I'm here to hopefully help you figure it out, um, at least a little bit. So, the reason I'm doing this video is basically to warn you. Don't be scared, it's not that bad, but a very much keep in mind, if you want to do this, be warned. So, going in it... We'll take a look at my service records, and as you saw, I've owned the SU-100M1. I have a pretty decent record, 1.16 kills a battle, I would say isn't bad, average damage of 1200 a game, 65% hit ratio, not great, but, you know, not bad. Never got top gun on it though, and that's down to the damage that the gun does. It's a very low damage gun, but high rate of fire. Uh, oop, wrong one. That one. Take a look real quick. So you get a 100mm gun, fires almost 10 rounds a minute, 175 pen, which is okay but not great, and 230 damage again is okay but not great. Accuracy is pretty good and aiming time is pretty good. Um, but what you can see here is that the gun is rear mounted, and because it's rear mounted, it has almost no depression. Now, don't hold me to this, but I do believe that the SU-100 M1 has about 12 degrees of depression, but I'm not entirely sure, so please do not take my word for that number, but it's something like that. However, when you get to the SU-101, and I had the standard gun on it, which worked fine. The gun is not the problem. The speed is not the problem. Nothing on this tank is the problem. But the depression on this tank is worse than the SU-100M1. I could live with the depression on that tank. I mean, it was bad, but I could live with it. As you saw in the end, I did pretty well with it. Not, you know, extremely great, and I never got a top gun on it, but... I did pretty well. Getting more than one kill a battle on average, I would say is always a good thing. But this tank, the SU-101, I've only done about four battles in it, maybe seven? I don't know, a couple, less than ten. You can take a look. Mm, sorted up by name. And we go down to the S. U101. Six games, 50% victory ratio. I got five kills in those six games. Hit ratio of 75%, 1100 damage on average. So I was doing about the same with this stock version as I was doing with this one. Um, you know, damage wise and all that, and amount of kills per battle. However, because the depression was so depressingly bad, yes, bad pun, I know. I sold the tank. I kid you not. In Himmelsdorf. No, it was not Himmelsdorf. Um, I don't remember. It was a city map. I don't exactly remember which one. But a city, city map. With streets that are paved. I couldn't shoot at a tank that was six feet away from me. Two meters, if you live in Europe. I couldn't shoot him. I was pointing over him because of the depression and I think the difference between the two is the SU-101 M1 has about 12 degrees of dep depression which if we look at it is like this like here at the end of the gun so pretty horrifically bad but you know some not a whole lot but some while the SU-100 and one <laughs> almost got it wrong has like two degrees of depression that is literally here that, that's this much. It has almost virtually no depression. And I just couldn't even shoot at targets in a street map. On the middle of the street because there was a little bump in front of me. And I had to 
go over that bump, go all the way down before I could even, you know, put my first shot into him. And I know this isn't a brawling TD or anything, it doesn't have a lot of hull armor, although they can bounce the occasional shots, do not underestimate them. Both the SU-100 M1 and the 101 can bounce shots. They're very, very angled. But I just could not get my gun pointed at the target. Half the time I would have to completely expose my tank, stick out through bushes, in order to even shoot at the target. So I actually went back, rebought my SU-100, and I'm now working on grinding out this line and going to the 152. How does it get the big dirt guns, you know, the BL-10 and stuff at the uh, ISU 152? Let's get this little beast here. Um, that's how bad it is. And like I said, I liked well, liked is a big word, but I didn't mind the SU 100 M1. Um, I did pretty okay in it. Um, it was reasonably painless grinding through it. Um, probably one of the faster tier 7s that I actually made it through. Let's see if I can sort it by... Um, eh. Level. It's looking for tier, but it's called level. So... No, well, actually I did more battles in it than I thought I did. I mean, I needed 83 battles to get past that one, 114 to get past that. 147 to get past this one because my average experience was slightly low on this one because you just don't do a lot of damage. It's a chipping away gun, which in some cases can be brilliant, but in other cases you can't defend yourself with a Virgo. Yeah, you can pump a lot of shots in them, but they take two shots and you're dead, and you have to take ten shots in order to kill them, you know. So it's a kind of good news, bad news situation, but. I just want to put this video out there to warn you, the SU-100M1 is workable and, in my opinion, the SU-101 is unworkable. The guns on it are good, it has a good gun selection, but the depression completely kills that tank. And I don't really want to work through a tier 8 that doesn't function properly, that is highly situational. I don't mind a situational tank like the British TDs that are slow and if people know where to shoot it, you know, you're dead very quickly, but those are situational. This one is just an extra degree of situational on top of that. And I think it gets better, you know, at tier 9 because you go back to a more traditional front mounted gun instead of a rear mounted, but I really don't want to have to grind through an entire tier 8 just to get to a better tank. And I know that the final one is, you know, pretty good. Um, and actually pretty comparable to this one. So, you know, why would I suffer through this whole tank for quite a while? I mean, 150k, there's another 50k... That's another roughly 50, so it's about 250k you have to grind out to get the whole thing. Although you don't have to get that one, granted. Um, but th that's quite painful. So, yeah, I just decided to go back to the SU-100 and go down the other tree. I thought it would be worth it. I don't mind the challenge. I don't mind the underdog tank at all. I have a couple of them. You know, the, the situationals, like the KV-4, yeah, it can be a beast, but it's also so slow, and if anybody goes around it, or artillery, or... You know, I don't usually pick the real easy tanks. Um, I have a lot of them, like British mediums. Yeah, they have good guns, but they're so incredibly fragile. This is ridiculous. French autoloaders... Their armor is non-existent, so again, very situational and not the easiest to play. It's not like you throw it into battle and it will just function. So I don't mind the harder to play, harder to play tanks at all, but in my opinion, this one is unplayable. So this is not as much as a review as a warning or I don't know. I don't know what this is. 
a guide, a... Maybe just a help to help you decide if you want to go down that line. Like I said, the first one is pretty damn good. It was pretty fun, but already situational with the gun depression, which was bad but workable. And this one, the gun depression, is not workable. If the map isn't entirely flat, you're going to have to be on top of a slope and then over it to even point at anybody that's down there, completely exposing your tank way more than you want to on a fixed hull TD. So keep that in mind. If you're at the SU-100 and you're at the point of deciding which tree you want to go down to, keep in mind that this is the heavy damage tree and this is more of the chip away guns. But up to tier 8, it does not have depression. And at tier 8, it probably climaxes at the worst depression in the whole game. And I think there's a tank that has worse depression than this. If there is, let me know in the comments down below. But I'm pretty sure this one is going to win it. Um, I cannot say a whole lot about these two. Obviously, since I don't have them and never had them. But you also hardly ever see those in-game. And my bet is, because of these two... The no depression, rear mounted pieces of shit. Well, not this one, like I said, but this one, definitely a piece of shit. And these two um, are pretty similar. Uh, you have to find it slightly faster, and I do believe it's slightly more armored, if I'm not mistaken. Let's take a quick look here. It's not going to turn into a complete comparison, but slight HP deviation between the two. Slightly more powerful engine here and a higher top speed. Slightly better traverse. Actually has better hull armor. Um, but the sides and sides are weaker. Um, they're stronger here with a hundred. So not by a whole lot. But the front armor is actually quite a bit better. But I think this one has more angles to it. So effectively they're going to be pretty much the same. Same gun traverse speed. Fuel range is slightly better. Um, however, this is a open top vehicle, which means you are going to take extra damage or full damage from high explosives, so artillery is going to be your worst nightmare. So overall, this one has a faster firing gun with less penetration and less damage, but you fire, you know, one third-ish faster. But this one is a way bigger bada boom with more pen, closed tank, so no open top. And I think all around, probably the better tank. So take from this what you want. Um, like I said, this is just a warning. Don't, well, <laughs> it's your choice, but I would say don't make the same mistakes I did. I love an underdog tank, but <laughs> there's underdog and there's just a dead dog. <laughs> This is a pretty much dead dog. And I know there's people that don't agree with me and say that it's workable. And yeah, the gun is good. If you can point it at the target. And that's the biggest problem I have with this tank. You just cannot get that gun pointed at where it needs to go. So, hopefully this video was helpful to you. If it was, give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos, please subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one.